Welcome to the Virginia Cooperative Extension Plant Clinic, All About Veggies. These plant clinics are sponsored by the Virginia Cooperative Extension Program of Virginia's two land-grant universities, Virginia Tech and Virginia State University. These plant clinics are staffed by master gardeners from the Fairfax County Master Gardeners Association. Roseanne is going to get us started tonight with our bug watch. This week, we're featuring cabbage worms, and I can hear a heavy sigh from anyone who has ever grown kale or cabbage. Roseanne? <laughs> Well, thank you, Becky. Yeah, it's been interesting reading about this cute little bug. Um, we think of it as the cabbage worm. It's also referred to as the imported cabbage worm. And I'm not sure where it's imported from, but it'd be nice if we could export it. It's a common pest. We find plants in the cabbage family. So those could be cabbage, kale, cauliflower, broccoli, things like that. Turnip and radish also fall into that category. So some of these plants are more favored than others as far as damage that the cabbage worms will do. The ma major damage, though, occurs during the seedling establishment and during the early head formation period. This negatively affects both the plant and the fruit growth and then also the yield as a result. The pupil will overwinter in plant debris. And we're going to be talking about cleaning up debris so that will be fit right in. And then in spring, the butterflies emerge. They're really cute, little white things, right? They become really active, sipping the nectar and laying eggs on the underside of those toast plant leaves. Then those cute little larvae feed on the leaves and they can bore into the vegetable head. So that's where you're going to start getting more and more of that damage. So the time from the egg to adult is about four to five weeks. So you may get two or more generations that can be produced each year. And that becomes an ongoing battle in the garden. So what should you look for, okay, in order to monitor your plants? First off, you want to look for those little white butterflies. Cute picture there. I noticed the black tips on the wing. They're not a problem in themselves, but they are an indicator. So it's a larval feeding that is concerning, as I mentioned. So you want to inspect your plants for the larva, you know, for any irregular feeding holes or skeletonization of the leaves and the plants. The larvae are green, as you can see in this lower picture, and they blend in. So you have to check for them on the midrib of the plant leaves. Okay. You also want to look for the dark green fecal pellets, also referred to as frass. So you'll find that on the ground around the plant. They've bored into the vegetable heads. You can soak those heavily, uh, those harvested heads in salty water, and the larva will float to the surface. Now, I don't, it doesn't do much for me as far as appetizing, but it could work. So, how do we control these guys? You can prevent them by removing plant debris, as I mentioned, uh, after your growing season. Use floating boat covers, okay, and that's going to help prevent any egg laying. Or you can hand pick any larvae when you see them, okay? We can control them chemically. There's a chemical called Bacillus thuringiensis, commonly referred to as BT. It's an organic microbial insecticide, and it's very, very effective on the younger caterpillars. Spinosad, neem, and pyrethum are very effective organic in the insecticides also. And you can also refer to the pest management guide. Um, you can find that through the Fairfax Master Gardeners website, edition 2022, look for table 2.210. And it's got some good information on the frequency of putting down any insecticides because it varies depending upon the type of the product. So it's got a good list of things there. Uh, you want to avoid, though, any broad, broad spectrum insecticides such as seven, because that's harmful not only to the insects, but also to your beneficial in your birds. Most important, though, with the any kind of insecticide, you want to carefully read the labels and be sure that you're wearing any protective gear that they recommend, okay? So here are some of the resources I looked at. You can see there's a link to the pest management guide there. Very informative. So if you're hoping to grow any of these plants, vegetables, definitely look up this information beforehand so you're ready to address those guys. 
So back to you, Becky. That was great information. Thank you. I have found it really wonderful to uh, train my kids to pick those caterpillars off. They think it's the best little garden activity ever. And also, if they want to go find butterflies with their butterfly net, to find those, catch those, because we don't care what happens. You hire the <laughs> children out to pick the larva. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, thank you so much. That was wonderful. To register for future sessions and to find additional resources, including great articles, weed profiles, and more research sources, visit fairfaxgardening.org. You can check out our calendar to see the monthly calendar for future topics. We've been hosting these plant clinics since the summer of 2020, and all were, re were recorded and are on the VCE Fairfax County YouTube site. In addition to the virtual plant clinic presentations, you can see the six presentations from our fall 2020 Lunch and Lawn series, reviewing fall turf care and winterizing your lawn, as well as our 2021 Spring Lunch and Lawn series and our Zone 7 Garden series. There are a lot of great speakers and informative topics. We have a lot of wonderful opportunities coming up for you, and we hope to see you at one of these programs again soon. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending.